yes, that. Todd. <laughs> Mr. Mike Tannenbaum has just checked in. Dun, 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 dun. Mike Tannenbaum, ESPN NFL front office insider, the former Jets and Dolphins executive. You can find him on the Mothership, Get Up, NFL Live, Sports Center, and Mike T joining us. All right, I'm going to make you the agent for Saquon Barkley. What would you do or have done that could have changed this outcome for him to get paid? Great to be with you, Dan. I make them realize that I'm 40% of your offense. And Daniel Jones, who you just overpaid at $42 million a year, completed 74% of his passes on 77 targets, and you have no chance to win without me. And while you have leverage by not giving me what I want, I have leverage because I may not miss a $555,000 weekly paycheck, Dan, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be playing week one against the Cowboys. All right. Now I'm going to make you the Giants GM. What do you say as a return volley? Say, hey, look, you know, we, we extended here. We could franchise you as much as you're disappointed being franchised in 2023. Guess what? We could do it again next year. So that's $22 million. And that takes you through seven years of your career. So we love you. We appreciate you. But, you know, you play a position that there's a lot of replaceable parts. And the one other interesting thing to me, though, is, Dan, he's a much improved pass protector. He's their best player overall, and he's a great locker room guy. So if I'm the Giants, I'm telling him, like, I want to reward you for that and try to stretch to give him the benefit of the doubt. How did we get here? That is a great question. You know, you go back a handful of years, you know, Dan, we're talking about Alex Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, Todd Gurley, great players that got paid. 14, 15, 16 million dollars. And I think what's happened over time is, you know, Kansas City is a great example. They draft Clyde Edwards Alaire in the first round. And then Isaiah Pacheco, a seventh rounder from Rutgers, beats him out. And I think what teams are saying is we have to pay so much money to the A players that here's a position there's just more supply than demand. Yeah, I, I know that we're, we've uh, taken up this crusade to get running backs paid, but I don't think it's fixable. Um, it's like middle linebackers. The the game evolved, and then you had to evolve. There's no Mike Singletary or Ray Lewis or Brian Urlacher anymore. You don't need them anymore. The tight but, end learned to be a wide receiver as well as you know a good blocker. Dan, you just nailed it. Like To me, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach, and that's where I think the Giants are wrong. Saquon is dynamic in the passing game. When you talk to opposing defensive coordinators, job number one when they play the Giants is Saquon in space, not between the tackles. And that's why... I can see why Josh Jacobs didn't get paid, although I think he's been very productive. But Saquon, as a quote-unquote offensive player, deserved to get paid. And that's why I think this running back conversation, we're sort of like sometimes missing the context. Yeah, I, I don't know. If if you hold out, then you lose money. And so Saquon made a – he alluded to this on a podcast uh, today. But I don't know if – holding out. We've seen the Le'Veon Bell thing where the Jets bailed out the Steelers, but I I just don't know if holding out matters. Or you're going to miss the first game against the Cowboys. Okay. You're missing out on uh, you know half a million dollars, and what are you going to prove? Yes, we missed you, but we're not giving you a contract extension. So, Dan, what's going on in the league now is this whole idea of a hold-in. The way the system works now, you really can't hold out. The fines aren't forgiven. But he could show up on week one and say, hey, remember you had leverage back on July 16th? Well, guess what? I'm showing up. I'm getting paid $555,000. And guess what? My back's a little bit tight. Mm -hmm. Check with me next week. So to me, like, I, and I'm not saying he's going to do that because he's a great person and I don't know where his head will be heading into week one a month from now. But he certainly has some levers he could pull. And if I'm the Giants GM, that's keeping me up at night because my quarterback is average. He is just a player that played well last year, but he only had 15 touchdown passes. So for us to get to where we want to go, we need Saquon Barkley. Why didn't they franchise Danny Dimes and give Saquon Barkley, a <coughs> four, if he's that important, give him a four-year deal uh, or something like that? Yeah, they surely could have done it. I just think – Finding a quarterback, the replacement, and I think the challenge for the Giants specifically, Dan, is they're going to win enough games where they're not going to be talking about Drake May or Caleb Williams. So now they're saying like the juxtaposition of like a B in Daniel Jones, who are we going to get that's better than him? So I just thought what they paid him was you know too much given 
the limited production he's had and his proclivities with turnovers. What if we said that you could have incentives in these contracts, but they didn't count against the salary cap? Let's I say for running backs. Yep. Yeah, I think that's a sensible solution, but I think what the 32 owners would say is like what we bargained for was cost certainty. And as long as that's allocated within a system, I think they would listen, but they're not going to do anything to pierce the cost certainty that they have. Oh, I agree. If I said that you could have Saquon Barkley or Josh Jacobs, no brainer? No brainer. A- again, when you look, they threw him the ball 77 times a year ago. He was a massive part of their offense. What's interesting about Jacobs is when you look at Jimmy Garoppolo's best years of his career, 2016, 2019, 2021, he had a top five rushing attack. And I think in, in Vegas, what we're talking about is not what Josh Jacobs does as a runner, but the production he gets for Jimmy G in the play action pass game. Yeah. Without Jacobs, defenses aren't going to honor that play action. Um, what if an owner asked you to tank? Like pulled you aside and said, hey, I want that number one pick. How would you go about tanking? You know, that's just not for me. I mean, I, I, it's not how I'm wired. I want to compete. I want to beat you every day. And you hire the wrong guy. I just, look, there's a time and a place to take certain players off the field on the last game of the season. Like, I get that. And maybe there's a way you can do it in a very artful way. Hmm. But generally speaking, that, that that's a tough, tough haul to ask people to do that. If you were the Jets GM again, and Hard Knocks is coming to town, and your team doesn't want Hard Knocks in town, <coughs> how do you go about trying to modify that where it, it can work for everybody without it being, you know, infringing on, you know, your preparations? So, Dan, that happened in 2009. We hired Rex Ryan. We draft Mark Sanchez. Hard Knocks comes to us and say, hey, we want to, you know, do you guys. And I said, no. And then I had a conversation with Ozzie Newsom, the longtime, very successful GM of the Ravens. He said, you know, Mike, when we did it, we had a better training camp. You could actually go back to Vince Lombardi. They used to have cameras at the Packers practices in the 60s. Because what Coach Lombardi says, you actually have better practices. And based on my experience, that's exactly what happened, Dan. We had mm-hmm. great practices in Portland, New York. And what I would tell Salah, Coach Sala, is, you know what? Like, when you trade for Aaron Rodgers, that's what's going to happen. It's an all-time great quarterback in New York. What do, what do you have to hide? But I keep thinking, I don't want to focus on Aaron Rodgers, even though people want to see him and hear him. I would focus on Zach Wilson. I, wanted, I would have him as part of the storyline that the Jets, he got humbled, humiliated, uh, demoted, you bring in Rodgers, and now you watch him watching Aaron Rodgers. So you're, that's the lens you're watching Rodgers through. I think that might be an interesting storyline. I love that. And, and candidly, that's part of what Hard Knocks is really about, is to take it where ordinarily you can't get to. So that, that to me is one of the many storylines. Like The other one to me is like, how is Aaron Rodgers impacting the team? Like How is he making Garrett Wilson better? How is he making Brees Hall better? Those are things that you ordinarily couldn't see. What was the toughest cut you ever had? Probably Danny Woodhead, which was just a a catastrophically dumb idea. So um, he was a young, productive player, and we just sort of like outsmarted ourselves um, from a standpoint of like he was young, emerging, and I should have found a roster spot someplace else. But what's it like? And who picked up Danny Woodhead? Oh, only Bill Belichick within like <laughs> five hours. Like, you know, I went home eating one glass of wine, Dan. I woke up eating about 15. I'm like, Mike, you are. I was so, you know, like I was a moron and it got worse. <laughs> you know, Coach Parcells used to have an expression like one beer is too many and 20 is not enough. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. Like if anybody else picked him up, then you'd be like, all right, wait, who picked him up? Belichick. Oh. Yeah, I, I mean, like, seriously, any of the other 30 teams, like <laughs> any of them, all of them. Did you ever, but how often would you cut a player, you personally as a GM? 100% of the time. In Miami, New York, I want to see every one of them. And okay. I, always said the same, I always said the same thing, Dan, which is, as professionals, we have a job to do. And let's face it, in my career, Dan, I've been on both ends of that conversation. Neither end of it is good. It's always uncomfortable. And... You have a job to do. You have to go from 90 to 53, and you have to let 37 men go and 
you know, tell them that they're not a fit for you. And I always told our staff this, there's something wrong with you as a human being, like in, inside your soul, if it didn't bother you somehow. So both those things can be true. You have a job to do and it should really bother you. Great to talk to you as always. We appreciate your insights. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thanks for bringing up Danny Woodhead. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'm going to the bar. <laughs> Mike Tannenbaum, ESPN NFL front office <laughs> insider.